Hello everyone, welcome again to another episode of our Python series um, with emphasis on you know, consecutive wet and dry day um, computation. Alright, so we've had two separate episodes. The first one where we generated our own NP, um, I mean our own ASCII data, and then used that as a basis to understand how the consecutive wet day function works. And we saw from it that this is picking out the longest spell or the longest period of consecutive dryness or wetness and the second aspect focused on using the same function on the tabular data and regularly tabular data you know data we have in structures of rows and columns mostly what you have in your excel spreadsheets and then your csv formats and the rest and so based on request and then also means to advance this we have addressed the same consecutive wet or dry day computation functions and then applying it to multi-dimensional data sets this time and specifically we are looking at it being used or being applied on a net cdf data set all right so that's what we'll be doing today if you're new here don't forget to subscribe and be part of the family and we all want to grow together so let's learn let's be good together all right, so to kick it started, we import our XRA, which is to allow us read and then manipulate our multi-dimensional data. That's a net CDF format. And then we also import the pandas, which I'll be using this specifically for a daytime creation. And also make use of the NumPy for other functionalities as we look through. All right, so again, I'll upload this onto the GitHub page, so those who would need um, it can actually have a look at it and then probably use it and so yes so we import our XRA import our pandas and then import numpy and then now we come to the consecutive wet or dry day function and the earlier one we wrote made use of the while loop and so this is an enhancement and this actually really faster because um, this makes use of the for loop so we uh, build a function or consecutive on a data set on the threshold for either dry or um, wet and then the type where input here can be either cdd or cwd depending on what you are computing and so we have a counter we initialize a count to zero and then we open up a blank list for appending certain outputs to then now we enumerate the data set okay so by ing where i represents the um, various positions and then the J represents the data itself and then wherever um, the um, consecutive function to be applied is set as CWD then it means what we are doing is that we will loop through the DA that's the data set and wherever the data set is greater than the threshold it means we increase the count which we've initialized to zero so it means this will be increasing and then for a data point where this function is not true, the count is reinitialized to zero. And then we save this back to the count. And this to help us, you know, number out consecutive periods and then break through whenever um, that condition is not met. And if it's CDD, then it means when this is less than the threshold. Um, so in actual sense, CWD means greater or equal to the threshold where in this case the threshold is one where one is for rainy day so greater or equal to one and then less than one being the dry day which we'll be using for the cdd and then from there we append the count at every time step to the overall counter and when we are done we return the maximum overall counter which would be the maximum spell for the data set okay and so next we now apply this function to the multi-dimensional data set so in this case I'm making use of a rainfall data set and I open the data set which is rainfall.nc using the XRE open data set function and then I call the variable PR and this data actually is in a unit of kilogram per um, that's kilogram per meter square per second so I need to convert this into millimeters um, which is then by multiplying the factor of 86400 to convert that and then the next phase is to pull out the time and then the years now what i do in here 
let me run this up here so we get to see clearly what it is so by calling out the data dot time we get to see the time component of our data set and then if I need the years of this data set it means I make use of my square bracket approach and call the time dot year as a string and that produces only the years yes now if I pick the values of the time dot years I get the values as an array which I can change into a set so that there are no duplicates so by changing this to a set there are no duplicates and then I later pass this back as a list so that I can still have the same list approach but this time without duplicates and so that's typically what we've done in the first part because we want to make use of the years and then compute the CWD or CDD on a yearly basis depending on our, uh, our data set alright so that's for the first two parts and then the next item is to then look at the size of uh, I mean pick the, the data shape and then we make a list out of that uh, we term that as I mean respective sizes and this because the data set is based on time longitude latitude will give us a time longitude latitude um, shape so I mean you can always test it out here okay and because I would be computing the CWD CDD on specific um, for the various years I would need all the time steps but I would need the length of this first part which is the time to be equal to the number of years so I pick the years we created without duplicates and then find the length of that so the length of the years alone is being passed into the first position of the shape right so that in its place we would have something like this 165 by 12 by 6 okay and then after that we create zeros that are based on the size right so we just create um, an array of zeros for the same size as CWD and then as CDD and then now we loop through the years we start looping through the years so if I start with maybe the first year maybe 1850 it means we want to just subset that data and then perform the CDD or CWD for that period alone alright so for I or year I mean for I comma year in enumerate years meaning I would be the position and then the Y R will be for that particular year and then we now loop through the first I mean the, the second shape so looking at this we have the second one being the latitude so first is the time the latitude and then the longitude so whilst we are looping through the time component up here which is the years we then create also another loop for the latitude and then in it another loop for the longitude so that we pick individual grids and then their time series okay and then we pick our CWD which is you know full of zeros we pick the position that matches that of our position of the year and then that of the position of the A which is the latitude and then the B which is the longitude and then we perform the function we call the function on our data set now in this case our data set would be calling the data and we select the time which is equal to the year we are now computing right and then when we have that we pick the whole time series okay for the points that correspond to A and B which is the latitude and longitude of interest which is our grid point okay so we'll have the time series which is for a particular year and we extract the values okay because our function is based on um, again more ASCII um, sort of computation and then we pass in our threshold and then what we want to estimate so we do that for the CWD in the first part and do the same for the CDD in the second part so this is the component that takes a bit of time all right and then once we are done we'll have um, we'll have an array of CWD and then CDD which is made up of the consecutive wet days and consecutive dry days for individual points and then individual periods all right and so once we have that now we are going to change this array into a data array so it's easy to now manipulate that with X array and you know easily visualize 
So we make use of our xr.data array, which is a creation of a data array. And we indicate that our data is, in this case, is CWD. All right. And then we pick the dimension. So the original dimensions of the data. So data.dims to give us the dimension. We create that as a list and pass that as the dimensions again into the new data array. And then the coordinates, which is slightly different from dimensions. Coordinates actually are the values for the values along each um, um, dimension. So now we pass in the values for the longitude, the values for the latitude, and then we pass in the values for the time because we had the time dimension also. And that's where we use the pandas to date time um, sub function. And then we transform the years here into a date time by passing in the format because our formats for the years were just yearly format. So percentage y will convert these into. Um, yearly time steps or into yeah day times with just the year components all right so let me just go back again and we look at that cwd and that's how it is so it's computed for all the periods as an array all right and so once you've done this part we also want to name a variable so the variable in this case is the cwd which is a consecutive word day and then we give extra attributes by creating a dictionary where we pass in the attributes so description to be um, the what the data really contains okay so consecutive with days in full and the name here is just a variable name in the short form and then we give the units now CWD is um, based on consecutive number of days so the units are in days all right and then we save this data areas a new underscore CWD we can do same for the CDD making use of the CDD output and then we run this part and this changes uh, array up here into more of a data array. So now if I call my new underscore CWD, it comes out as a data array with a variable CWD and then time okay equal to the number of years, all right, and then the latitude and longitudes matching up. And that's how simply you compute your CWD or your CDD for a multi-dimensional data set. Now with this it's easy to visualize any point. So um, Let's say I call my new underscore CWD at point zero, okay? Which is this, okay? So I call the first time and then I can just simply plot and yes, and that should be the output right here, okay? Um, also bear in mind, I mean, 